Hello and welcome to the channel that travels with you all around the world, one small place at a time. Today, Tyson and I have come to Lugano in Switzerland. I'm gonna share with you my first impressions, what there is to do, sort of get a feeling for it and tell you guys if it really is worth coming here. This place is super popular for a day trip from Milan, which is only about an hour away, as well as other cities that don't have the privilege of being next to a beautiful lake that spans across two countries. It is my first time here in Lugano, so I'm really excited for what lies ahead. First things first is obviously the walk along the lake promenade, which is a very, very long promenade. And alongside it, you've got different shops, you've got different vendors selling all sorts of things. Then you've obviously got lots of different ways of exploring the lake. You can rent a boat, you can rent a pedalo. This is quite nice. It's a great way to enjoy the view of the lake without having to physically go on the water. I think that Lugano is one of those places that you just come without any real expectations. Like you don't necessarily plan tours and museum visits. This is a place that you come just to enjoy yourself. And that's exactly what Tyson and I have been doing. And I have to say it is actually really relaxing. What I would have loved to see is all of this, like this whole road behind me made pedestrian. Then it would have just been perfection because the relaxing vibe that you get from this side and even from the other side across that road is very different to the noise that's created by the cars that are passing by right in the middle. I'm walking along some of the back streets now and what's surprising me is that it is pretty empty despite it being pretty much the start of summer season already. I think it's because I've come here on a Monday afternoon. So if you guys are hoping to get a clear view of all of Lugano without many people in your way, definitely come on a weekday. This is primarily a working city. It's primarily a banking area of Switzerland. Uh, so I am guessing that most people are working at this time of day. So that's definitely a top tip for you guys. If you do come to Lugano, make sure it's during a weekday and preferably from nine to five so that you get the whole place to yourself. I have been quite fascinated with all of these cafes and restaurants surrounded by lots of greenery and yet facing out onto historical squares here in Lugano. So my first thought was oh, a non-alcoholic cocktail this size for 14 Swiss francs, which is the equivalent of about 15 euros. That's quite expensive. But then they read out this whole platter of food and suddenly the value is much better. Love, love, love all of these buildings. This is a little piazzetta that has a bunch of designer shops, big brands. This area really does remind me of Monaco. Look at that, you've got Gucci over here. You had Hermès and Cartier and Montclair back over there. I can kind of see how the lifestyle here would be similar to Monaco, but instead of the Mediterranean Sea, you have Lake Lugano. Right now I'm walking through something that looks like a shoe market. All right, all right, a little bit unexpected. I am in the main sort of commercial area of Lugano right now. Oh, that's like a chocolate brand, I heard. Never tried it, but I am kind of curious to pop in and see what's in there. Got kicked out, no dogs allowed. Mm, Tyson, what do you say to that? He doesn't seem to care as much as his mommy does. That's fine, you know what, that's fine. I didn't hear any good things about that chocolate brand anyway. I noticed that in Lugano there's a lot of these archways and what you can do is look up and in some areas you're gonna see beautiful artwork on the ceiling. I don't know what year that's from, I don't know how I got there, but all I can say is, is it kind of feels like you're in a fairy tale. It makes you wonder and that's the beauty of it. Now this is what I call a fountain. Oh, I think I've got ducks in there, look! We see I told Okay, people here clearly like dogs. That is a huge bonus point when it comes to my Lugano scoring board. I mean, let's be honest, wherever I go, it's liking dogs at the top or dog friendly city at the top and then all the other criteria sort of come way, 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 way down below. Don't really care about much else to be honest. One way that this place definitely differs from Monaco is the big green open spaces that Tyson is really loving. I am in one of the parks here in Lugano and look, you've got the lake right behind you and also you've got huge stretches of greenery, which is something that you definitely don't have in Monaco because of the lack of space. Wow. 
this somehow reminds me of Como. Yes, I think that's the closest comparison I can find on this vlog that I'm gonna link in the description below for you guys to check out later. Tyson and I are about to get picked up. So it's been exactly two hours that we've been exploring Lugano. As you can see, the central part is small enough to be able to do in an afternoon or maybe even as a day trip. Obviously, there is still lots more to do, like taking the cable car up to one of the mountains and getting a bird's eye view of Lugano, exploring the local cuisine, bars, shops, restaurants, and so, so, so much more. I just wanted to focus this particular video on getting a first overview, a first impression of what it is that makes Lugano so incredibly special. I hope you enjoyed it, keep smiling, and I'll see you next time.